hello everyone i'm dr amrita and i'll be speaking on managing metabesity with sgld2 inhibitor and where you can place this molecule in your patient uh, with this kind of phenomena so first let me take you through what is metabesity it's just a spectrum of metabolic disorders with a common soil and this common soil is basically metabolic and inflammatory origins this includes uh, patients with diabetes obesity metabolic syndrome cardiovascular disease neurodegenerative disorders accelerated aging all these things and even in some case uh, development of malignancy so all these things are encompassed and called as metabesity so uh, we all know the impact of uh, obesity on health and it has not uh, not spared any part of the body so be it central nervous system liver nfld pancreas uh, we see on a daily basis uh, our radiologist report fatty pancreas so muscle we have insulin uh, the, there is a increased use of lipids artery atherosclerosis polycystic ovarian disease all these things are the impact of obesity on health and out of all these risk factors or the causation so main thing is cardiovascular health which is deteriorated by the uh, the outcome is deteriorated by the high risk obesity so if we talk about uh, high risk obesity the cardio metabolic risk uh, mediators are basically insulin resistance high insulin resistance decrease glucose intolerance type 2 diabetes increase in blood pressure systolic uh, increase in abnormal lipid metabolism or dyslipidemia inflammation all these things lead to very bad cardiovascular outcomes and we have subsequent lectures for that so increased cardiovascular events coronary artery disease heart failure arrhythmia sudden death so all these things are by product of this metabesity so uh, we have been hearing in past lectures also the definition of obesity the bmi cut off for obesity tomorrow i would ask every one of you to come uh, and attend dr mishra's lecture for new definition of obesity so we will be having some change concept of, about obesity so one is a simple obesity which is inoffensive that means a person will not require a lot of pharmacotherapy and diet and exercise will definitely continue and we have on the other hand second set obesity needing aggressive management which will include pharmacotherapy uh, this is basically the inflammatory and metabolically deranged phenotype so uh, where can you place this molecule sglt2 and especially canadifosin in these kind of metabolic disorders so this is the mechanism of action of canadifosin 300 here you can see there are two pathways one is the kidney pathway here so 90% uh, of the molecule works through the kidney we all know it inhibits the sglt2 inhibitor uh, which definitely increases the urine glucose excretion uh, which has a beneficial effect on decreasing fasting plasma glucose and the ppg on the other hand there is a 10% uh, the the 10% is done by sglt1 inhibitor this is basically an inhibitor present in the small intestine here so it decreases the glucose absorption it has an increase in the circulating glp1 is increased and then a circulating pyy is also increased which uh, in turn helps in decreasing the ppg blood glucose so talking about this molecule so we all know uh, the renal threshold is that value from which uh, the kidney starts to excrete uh, urine uh, sorry excrete glucose in the urine and generally we have glucosuria so in a non diabetic person this value is 180 mg per deciliter when we talk about a person with diabetes this is even pushed towards the right hand side which is somewhere around 240 mg per deciliter but when we use this molecule canadifosin so this is further pushed towards the left that means at a lower value of 70 to 90 mg per deciliter also the person's body who is taking this molecule canadifosin will start excreting the uh, uh, glucose in the urine so if we talk about the uh, glucose excretion amongst all the uh, sglt2 inhibitor present as present right now so canadifosin 300 gives almost around 119 g per day it excretes 
uh, glucose, whereas DAPA does 70, EMPA does 78, and REMO does 72. This 190 grams per day uh, will lead to a deficiency of uh, four, loss of 476 kilocal from your patients who are taking this molecule. So talking about the SGLT1 inhibition, this is a local, transient and reversible. So what it does, it has very, uh, so there is no glucose malabsorption and the adverse effect due to GI is very less. Uh, there are only two molecules of SGLT2, one is sotagliflozin which has the highest SGLT1 uh, binding and the second molecule is canaglifosin. So, but we do not have the major GI side effect with this because of the SGLT1 in, uh, inhibition is very local and transient. So, as I said, it increases 35% of the GLP which reduces the thrombosis risk which Dr. Kameshwar just said. Uh, it induces insulin secretion and it helps in the expansion of beta cell mass and the uh, peptide YY is an anorectic peptide so it reduces appetite and PYY slows down GI motility. So talking about the effect on HbA1c if you use this molecule canal in 300. So here you can see the first, uh, uh, the first block here. This is <coughs> basically canaglifosin 100 and canaglifosin 300. <coughs> Sorry. So this canaglifosin, uh, <coughs> Sorry. So canaglifosin 300 is the dark blue bar here. Here you can see the reduction of HbA1c is minus 1.1. And when we use monotherapy canaglifosin 100, <coughs> the reduction is 0.9% uh, and when canaglifosin is added with other molecules definitely canaglifosin 300 fares well when compared to canaglifosin 100. <coughs> so HbA1c lowering and the highest approved doses this was a fantastic study done by Dr. A.K. Singh. It is not a head on head comparison but he has compared uh, CANA 100, DAPA 10, MPA 25, LIRA 1.8 Excellent I 2.0 and Dulaglutide 1.5. Excellent I is not available in the rest everything is available. So here you can see when we talk about the HbA1c lowering, so Excellent I 2 uh, did well but Canaglifosin uh, uh, 300 was fairly okay and it was giving a HbA1c reduction of minus 1% across all uh, groups. Talking about the significant weight reduction, so this was a study in which Glimipride and canaglifosin 300 was uh, compared over 56 weeks. So here you can see both the graphs they start to diverge from the fourth week only. So and the, the and at the end of 56, uh, 52 weeks it was seen that minus 5.7 percent of weight reduction was attributed to canaglifosin 300. But the main catch here is <coughs> both the molecule cana 100 and 300. Uh, they, they fared well uh, as compared to the molecule glipipride but the lean mass, you have can see the orange one is the lean mass, the lean mass reduction was more with canaglifosin 300 when compared with canaglifosin 100. So the major adipose, sorry, with visceral adipose tissue, there was an 8.1% reduction in the usage of canaglifosin 300. Body weight reduction, this was the same study by Dr. A.K. Singh. Again, not a head on uh, comparison, but you know, you can see across all the uh, monotherapy addition on metformin, addition on metformin, the sulfonuria, or addition with pyoglitazone as well, canaglifosin 300 was giving the maximum weight loss of minus 3.4 kg, approximately 3.4 to 4 kg, which is, uh, which is good. So, talking about the selectivity of SGLT2 in a better, canaglifosin has, as I said, 10% SGLT1 and SGLT2. It's not entirely, it has 264, whereas DAPA and EMPA, <coughs> sorry, they had almost 1200 to 2700 uh, fold uh, affinity to SGLT2. So SGLT plus SGLT2 inhibition would have expected to produce a robust glucosuria and transiently as I said it inhibits in the gut. So what this study, this was a network meta-analysis of almost 18,000 patients and they uh, included 22 trials in this study. This was again not a head-on head-to-head -head comparison. This was indirect comparison 
and they compared soda over DAPA and EMPA and all two. It was seen that soda glyphosate gave the benefit of uh, maximum benefit over heart failure uh, over DAPA, EMPA and ER2 glyphosate and soda glyphosate and canna glyphosate was similar. Uh, there was no significant difference found between canna and soda. Soda glyphosate has been approved by FDA for uh, uh, as a better drug for heart failure also. So in this net network meta-analysis it was seen that uh, the uh, head to head comparison shows significant 49% benefit <coughs> with non-selective LGLT2 inhibitor as compared to the selective LGLT2 inhibitor. So this is basically increase in the LGLT2 receptor selectivity will have a reduced uh, benefit of heart failure or CV death. Uh, and Credence and Canvas have also shown us that uh, the molecule SGLT2 inhibitor did well across all maize, secondary prevention, primary prevention and even renal outcome. Credence trial, it was shown that it is the molecule uh, Canaglyphosin is renoproductive and it has almost like 30% reduction, relative risk reduction in primary outcome, 34% uh, risk reduction in doubling of serum creatinine or renal death, 28% reduction in uh, dialysis, kidney transplantation or renal death. Here you can see all these things Hazard's ratio is favoring the molecule Canaglyphosin. So uh, primary outcome uh, for the uh, end stage renal disease, doubling of serum creatinine outcome and renal death, here you can see that plus event of and placebo clanoglyphosin start has start showing since <coughs> since one year and the hazard ratio is 0.7. So the major uh, issue with your patient is adherence. So this study was shown and it was shown that the most uh, adherent molecules, the patients are more adherent to uh, molecule metformin, second comes SGLT2 inhibitor and your patient do not, in this patient do not like to inject themselves so GLP-1 was kept at third. So uh, the highest rate of adherence was persistent and uh, so you should always use a molecule which your patient will be adherent to and across all the ADA guidelines 21, 22, 23, the position of SGLT2 has been uh, as a promising position as a first line therapy and they have given you a criteria where do you want to place this molecule, a patient with ASCVD, uh, any patient with uh, any kind of high risk of uh, cardiovascular disease, heart failure. So you name it and you can place the molecule. You have to be careful in some, some patients, that's all. So you should fairly choose uh, the, this molecule well in your patient. So metabolicity poses a significant challenge in patients of diabetes uh, beyond glycemic control and weight reduction. Hence, there is a need of multidisciplinary approach to addressing metabolic disorders. CV and renal complications are major complications for a person with diabetes. Early intensive cardiovascular and renoproductive therapy should be used for these kind of patients and usage of <coughs> SGLT2 inhibitor will have a beneficial effect on obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular and renal death. Thank you. Does canna glyphosate 300 have any advantage over other LGLT2 in terms of weight loss? Yes, sir. Uh, the SGLT2 inhibitor basically canna glyphosate has a graded response over weight loss, sir. 300 uh, has shown, even 100 versus 300 has also shown the maximum response. There is no head to head comparison, but again, the same study was Dr. A.K. Singh has told that it was the maximum with uh, 300. And we also use in our patients uh, basically for weight reduction, is a, it's a good molecule for that.